Well, it is possible that in the new year, New Mexico may finally have a statewide texting while driving ban. Yeah, this is going to be a huge talker. One state lawmaker thinks there may now be a better chance to get this thing passed. Senator Pete Worth is proposing another texting while driving ban during the upcoming legislative session. The idea is to ban any form of communication over a handheld device while behind the wheel. The issue has never gone to a full vote once in the last four years. Now, Senator Daniel Ivy Soto, who was once against the ban, says he will now back it. The concept is a concept that we need to address. It's just a question of how do we define what we mean. And I think after five years, Senator Worth has finally gotten there. This bill would also bar law enforcement from messaging on anything other than their dispatch systems while driving. We'll get ready for some more big changes at Paseo del Norte and I-25 this morning and all through the week. I-25 southbound had been closed all night. It reopened about an hour ago at 5, and it'll be the same drill all week long through Friday. Drivers will have to get off at Paseo, then get back on the interstate with the on-ramp. If you're going north, a heads up too, because the left lane will be closed. Again, this is sat, set to happen every night this week from 9 until 5 in the morning. And you better make a plan now rather than risk getting behind the wheel after you've been drinking. Law enforcement agencies all around the state are cracking down on DWIs on this New Year's. There are special enforcement plans not just on New Year's Eve, but they'll be going all through the end of January. They include sobriety checkpoints and saturation patrols. Plus, if you're out and you see drunk drivers, please call 911. Now, if you'd rather get a ride home instead of going to jail or the possibility of it, Bernalillo County's Tavern Taxi is offering you free rides. Service will pick you up at the bar and take you home. The county picks up the tab. It runs from 10 at night through 3 in the morning. For more information, head to our website, krqe.com, and click on the links tab. You know, if the governor of New Mexico does not like a bill passed by the legislature, the governor can veto it by simply doing nothing. Well, now one New Mexico lawmaker wants to get rid of what is called the pocket veto. Albuquerque Democrat Senator Jacob Candelaria is proposing a constitutional amendment to do away with the pocket veto in the upcoming 30-day session. He says the pocket veto gives too much power to the executive branch. A cabinet secretary caught in a lie by Larry Barker is now stepping down, but the governor's office insists they did not ask him to leave. The case was closed by the previous administration. That's what regulation and licensing superintendent J.D. Dennis told Larry Barker about a case that was actually closed five days after Governor Susana Martinez took office. Homebuilder William Kalowinski was indicted after never building a housing project outside of Santa Fe and never giving back the money. Dennis also said the attorney general wasn't interested in the case. We searched our records and, and could not find any information that would indicate that we were asked to prosecute the case. A lawsuit accuses Dennis of using his position to selectively prosecute former business rivals. The whistleblower lawsuit alleges Dennis said, quote, he didn't give a damn about rules and regulations when he was told he was breaking state personnel rules. The administration says Dennis is leaving to spend more time with family. Well, the recall petition is filed and the Bernalillo County Treasurer has officially been served. Manny Ortiz, as you probably heard, has been under fire for making investment decisions that could cost taxpayers millions. George Richmond, the guy in the county, didn't like that and filed a recall petition saying Mr. Ortiz is gambling with taxpayer dollars and wants him ousted from the job. This comes a month after the county commission voted no confidence in the treasurer. The petition could force Manny Ortiz into a recall election if 45,000 signatures are collected and a judge approves the petition. That hearing is slated for January 9th. Ortiz still defends his work, saying he did nothing wrong. It's another bad break for a car dealership in Albuquerque. Unique Motorsports is facing another big mess after, get this, a second water main break. The water line burst a week ago yesterday while the city fixed the pipes. Unique Motors had the parking lot clean, the cars detailed, then moved back into the lot. Then guess what? Yeah, yesterday morning the same thing happened again. Another line here at Lomas and San Mateo burst with water and mud rushing across the car lot. It's hurting us a lot, of course, you know, the week after Christmas is normally our one of our busiest weeks out of the year and we've been basically closed and unable to do business just because of all the mess. That's a huge mess. 
Now the owner says we'll have to go through the cleanup process again, so it could be a few more days before they can reopen. Now, typically, last week of the year, the dealership sells about 20 cars. This year, zero. And take a look at this, a fire at a gas pump in the Duke City. We got this video of flames shooting 10 feet high at the Phillips 66 gas station on Central and 86th. A man driving a fuel tanker had a fire extinguisher with him. He was able to put that fire out. There was a driver getting gas at the time, but thankfully nobody was hurt. A woman is charged with murder after a man is found lying in the middle of a New Mexico highway in Rio Rancho. Police arrested 23-year-old Amanda Jo Villa after they say she admitted to shooting Andrew Anderson after a fight on Saturday. Anderson was found laying in the middle of 528. He later died at the hospital. Officials say Via told detectives Anderson stole things from her. There was some sort of confrontation with a loaded gun and that eventually she pulled the trigger. Police also arrested two others in connection with the murder, Emily Lucero and John Cerna. Some recently released 911 recordings from a deadly encounter outside of Roswell are startling. This is from an incident back in October. One man was shot and killed by police and two officers were wounded. According to his dad, 30-year-old Cristobal Quintana wanted to die. More on that 911 recording from that suicide by cop case coming up in our next half hour.